Welcome to our channel, please hit the subscribe button so that you'll be notified whenever our new video comes out. The Widow's Might is a short story by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. This feminist fiction is from a third-person omniscient point of view and part of the first wave of feminism tenet of literary period. The story begins in the wake of their father's funeral, three siblings, James, Ellen, and Adelaide, find themselves in Denver, Colorado. The solemn occasion has brought them together, yet the bonds of family feel distant as they view the funeral as a kind of inconvenience to them. Their father's passing prompts a discussion about their mother, Mrs. McPherson, now a widow. Though they all outwardly offer to take her in, it becomes evident that they consider her a burden. Their conversations revolve around who should care for her and the financial implications it would entail. This discourse highlights a sense of familial obligation rather than genuine affection. Their father's lawyer, Mr. Franklin, is expected to arrive to discuss the will. In this awkward waiting period, the siblings reflect on their upbringing, which lacked warmth and love. The ranch they grew up on symbolizes a life they've all strayed from, pursuing their own separate paths. As their impatience grows, Mrs. McPherson remains upstairs, shrouded in her grief. Finally, Mr. Franklin arrives, and Mrs. McPherson descends to deliver a revelation. Her husband had transferred all his property to her name before his death. This renders the will irrelevant that was made ten years ago. She reveals that she has turned their ranch into a successful hospital, generating enough income to provide for herself without relying on their inheritance. The siblings are taken aback by her resilience and independence. Then Mrs. McPherson dramatically unveils herself, removing the black veil that concealed her face and donning a traveling suit. With the sunlight streaming in, she declares her newfound freedom from familial duty. She refuses her children's offers to take her in, asserting her identity as a real person with her own aspirations. She plans to explore the world, from New Zealand to Australia, Tasmania and Madagascar, embracing a life she has long deferred. As the story ends, the siblings and their mother go their separate ways. The siblings head back to the East Coast, while Mrs. McPherson embarks on her journey of self-discovery to the West. The theme of family obligation is central to the story, as three siblings, James, Ellen, and Adelaide, grapple with the idea of taking their widowed mother, Mrs. McPherson, into their homes but these offers are driven more by a sense of duty than genuine affection. For instance, Ellen and Adelaide's repeated assurances that their mother is welcome to live with them reveal their desire to fulfill their perceived roles as children. The lack of genuine concern the siblings display for their mother's well-being and their detached conversations about her future indicate a failure in communication and emotional distance. Moreover, the siblings do not remember their recently deceased father with affectionate endearments but rather divulge how their father fulfilled his fatherly duties well. Also Mrs. McPherson does not show any real affection towards her dead husband which is evident from the dramatic unveiling of herself. It also signifies her emergence from societal constraints and the beginning of a journey of self-discovery. In contrast to the sibling's sense of duty, Mrs. McPherson's rejection of the traditional roles assigned to widows and her decision to pursue her passions reflect her defiance against conformity. Her decision to assert control over her husband's property and establish a successful hospital on their ranch underscores her determination to carve her own path. This theme highlights the tension between societal expectations of women in the early 20th century and Mrs. McPherson's resolve to lead her life on her terms. The story portrays a transformational moment where a grieving widow reclaims her agency and redefines her identity, challenging the conventions of familial obligations and societal expectations.